Hi, fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We're back with another reaction. It's another pitch meeting in the MCU. Which one is this, Dan? We're watching Ant-Man and the Wasp. I actually expect there to be problems with this. I was not an Ant-Man per person anyway, so... Me neither, but we got to get through this to get to uh, Endgame, so... So be it. <laughs> Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. Somehow. Not spoilers. So you have an Ant-Man sequel script for me. Yes, sir, I do. It must have been hard to find a good way to follow up the events of Infinity War. Actually, super easy. Barely, barely an inconvenience. inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm just not gonna do it. This is gonna take place before. <laughs> Probably a good idea. Yeah. So what's the movie about? Well, Scott is on house arrest because of what he did in Civil War, and he only has a couple days left on his sentence. Okay. But Hope's mom, Janet, is gonna slide into his quantum DMs. What? Yeah, she's been stuck in the quantum realm for like 30 years, and her and Scott have something called a quantum entanglement. What's that? An excuse to get Scott involved in the story. <laughs> gotcha. So okay. Hope and Hank are gonna kind of kidnap Scott because they need his help with this quantum tunnel thing they're building to go save Janet. Seems pretty straightforward. Are there any antagonists? Oh yeah, a bunch. Oh really, a bunch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well first there's the FBI and they're kind of suspicious that Scott is violating his house arrest. Okay. So anytime they think he is, they're gonna have to rush over there and Scott's gonna have to try to get there before them. Why don't the FBI have someone stationed outside the house so they can just step in whenever they need to. They because should. my way's funnier. Fair enough. And then there's a bad guy named Sonny Birch. Oh, what's his deal? Well, he wants to steal Hank's shrunken lab so he can sell it to a buyer for a billion dollars. Oh, a mysterious billionaire that wants to buy PIM technology. That's a great setup. Yeah, pretty cool, right? So what's the big reveal? Who does the buyer end up being? We're never gonna find out. Oh, oh okay on. then. Really? Yeah. So how does Sonny Birch find out about Hank's lab? Well, Hope needs to buy a thing for the quantum tunnel, so she goes to see him. What does that thing do? It brings him into the movie. Gotcha. And why is he in the story anyway? Well, because I want the heroes to have car chases and fight scenes, but if they have those with the FBI, then there'd have to be consequences. So Sonny Birch Shoot. doesn't really affect the story in any meaningful way, other than leading a group of punching bags? No, not really. And that's it for the antagonists? No, I didn't even get to the main antagonist yet. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of a lot of antagonists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who's the main one? She's this character named Ghost. What's her deal? When she was a kid, she was exposed to quantum energy, and now she can phase through things things and she used to be a S.H.I.E.L.D. assassin. Wait, she's been around for years and was recruited by S.H.I.E.L.D.? Right. Feels like that raises a lot of questions about why we haven't seen her before in the MCU. Yes, it Whoops. does. Whoopsie. Anyway, she needs to use Janet's life force to save her own life or something? How does that work? Exposition. Did you just exposition. say the word exposition? <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. I mean, because of very complicated reasons relating to the quantum realm. Okay. So yeah, the characters are gonna go through a whole lot of complicated mumbo jumbo about the quantum realm without actually saying anything about it. Sounds pretty vague. Mm. Oh yeah, super vague. That way I could do anything I wanted plot-wise and blame it all on the mysterious quantum realm. I guess that's pretty smart. Thank you. So what actually <laughs> happens in the movie? Well, the characters are gonna steal this shrunken lab from each other over and over again, and once in a while they're gonna stop to shout exposition at each other. Very cool. <laughs> and at the end, Hank is gonna go into the quantum realm to save Janet. So what's she been up to this whole time? Reapplying mascara and tracking down a robe, apparently. Huh. Oh, yeah, she's older now, so she has white hair. I thought we said that time and reality works different in the quantum realm. Yeah, well, like I said, the quantum realm works in mysterious ways, so. But how did she survive down there? Like, what did she eat? She fed on quantum energy or something? I don't know. Where oh. did she poop? In, in a mysterious uh, <laughs> quantum toilet. Oh, mysterious toilets are tight. But how did the what? quantum realm help? Please stop asking me questions about the quantum realm. <laughs> well, okay then. Thanks. So is it gonna be hard for Ghost to survive now that Janet's back? Actually, super easy. Barely, Barely an inconvenience. inconvenience. How so? Well, Janet is gonna make Ghost feel better by using her fingers. Oh. Not like that. Oh. <laughs> yes, Janet spent so much time in the quantum realm that she evolved and she has powers now. What kind of powers? The kind that fix this one problem and are never spoken about again. Well, that is convenient. Oh yeah, so then everything kind of works out for everyone and everyone's happy. Well, you know, after Infinity War, it's actually gonna be nice to have a feel-good Marvel movie that- And then Hope and Hank and Janet are gonna die and Scott's gonna get caught in the quantum realm. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be pretty messed up, but that's Thanos for ya. So wait, the events of the movie were <laughs> happening at the same time as Infinity War? Well, this happened happens in a post credit scene and they built a smaller tunnel, so some time has passed. So Ant-Man wasn't on house arrest during Infinity War like we said he was. I don't know. Fair enough. Timelines are complicated. <laughs> so what do you think? Well, honestly, because Ant-Man wasn't in Infinity War, I think people are just gonna be super excited to check in with him. Right, that's true. Yeah, this could end up being one of our biggest movies of Phase 3. Fingers crossed. Mm, that's what I thought. That's no surprise. Yeah. Would anybody be surprised by that? <laughs> So there you have it, Dan. 
there were actually people involved in this as antagonists that you never really see again. Yeah, like, how do you mention you have a buyer, a billion dollar buyer for something, and you never have that person come up at all in your store? I don't know. That would make for a pretty good conspiracy, though, don't you think? Yes, yes it would. A nice thing to block off fan theories. I think it would be, especially if anybody was interested enough to do it, but, mm -hmm. you know. When the movie's not interesting, nobody else is going to do anything like that. Yeah, and, you know, using a lot of exposition doesn't help either. <laughs> no. Granted, you're dealing with a very complicated, physics-related matter, but you still have to be able to, you know, have something flashy to show the fans. You can't just, you know, wave it away by saying, oh, yeah, this is exactly what happened. Don't take my word for it, you know, just... I thought they hit the nail on the head with how the quantum realm actually works in this one here, mm -hmm. because they didn't really explain why if time works differently there then why is she all grayed up now because he had been in there for five years according to our timeline mm -hmm. but in the quantum realm it passes slower so time for her should have passed just as slow and she should have been in there maybe like a month by her standing yeah when we see uh scott again in endgame it does or not yeah in game it kind of messes everything up because we know for a fact that he wasn't in there as long as he thought he was he, no, he thought he was in there for five hours. Yeah, he thought he was in there for a much shorter period of time. And because of the way the quantum mechanics work, he was probably right. The thing is, that should have reflected on her, like you said. It doesn't make any sense that she's aged normally, even though she's supposed to be in an environment where that doesn't happen. That's true. They might have dropped the ball on that one a little bit. Either that or that was all, or that's, again, just how the quantum realm works. Well, and they pointed out, too, they kind of messed up the timeline, too, by saying that he wasn't under house arrest at the during the events of Infinity War, when which he was supposed to be at the beginning. I don't know, they're just kind of doing what they want to do here. Yeah, and, you know, kind of, that's what we said at the start of the video, Ant-Man wasn't our favorite, apparently it wasn't anybody else's either. It's probably somebody's out there, but you're right. The lowest rate of the Phase 3 MCU? Yeah, I'd say that makes sense. And I thought they had something here because there were some fun ideas with how, with how the shrinking technology works there. Mm-hmm. Because you could literally shrink, like, almost an entire city of things you need within a suitcase. Like, you can put an entire fleet of cars in there, and they're no bigger than micro-machines. Right. And then when you need them to be, they can just be re-enlarged to normal size. So yeah, and that kind of goes back to what they mentioned in the first Ant-Man movie, too, about how some of the things don't make any sense. Because if they're supposed to retain their mass, you shouldn't be able to move a whole backpack full of cars, but you do. Yeah. Because he's literally got an entire building that he shrinks down and packs away. Yeah. And then he just kind of drags it off. It, like you shouldn't be able to carry that thing, but no. apparently you can. The physics are all over the place in this show. It really is. I thought the cool thing was like how smart the ants actually get, though. Mm -hmm. That he used, because they actually get in there and help him do the, do a lot of the heavy labor. Honestly, that's the so. best part of the whole Ant-Man thing, is just them you know, having the whole army of ants that they can use at their disposal. Yeah. But the rest of it, you know, we've seen, you know, movies like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids that have kind of played on a lot of the same ideas already. Yeah. It's not totally original. But at the same time, I think it's important to have the ants because they can lift, I don't know how many times their body weight. Mm -hmm. So you would think that even by quantum standards here, whatever those may be, whatever heavy lifting they're doing, they're enlarged, so they're lifting much heavier things. Right. So, yeah. Right. So that, that part makes sense to me. Yeah. So it's like you're getting one thing right, but you're not getting the other thing right. Unless you explained it later on that you made it so that the technology, whenever you shrunk something, would make it, make it lighter. Mm -hmm. But you never, I don't know that they ever actually I don't think they ever that, did so. either. That's that's just forever going to be a dead fish on their doorstep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I and mean, you know, this is a comic book. Don't think about it too much. I won't. <laughs> I'm actually done right now. Okay. <laughs> so sure. yeah. Fam, I mean it when I say we're done. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bells, take a look at us on those things up there, and like and subscribe again. And should you feel like supporting us even further, I hope you'll consider joining up and becoming a member, guys. It's not required and certainly not recommended, but by God, we would love to have you anyway. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys. Bye.